Hi everyone. In the immunology subject, we are going to discuss about the complement system. The complement system is a biochemical cascade. That means a group or system of proteins in the blood serum. This complement is not a single substance but was comprised of several components which got the ability to lyse or damage certain cells such as bacteria, virus, tumor cells, all these things. Okay. So coming to the history of this complement or complement system, at the end of 19th century, it was observed by Bushner that bactericidal bacteriolytic and hemolytic actions of appropriate antibody is inhibited by preheating the anti-serum at 56 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes and the lysing activity can be reconstituted by using serum but not exposed to the bacteria previously. Now the Paul Elherich that is called this lytic agent of serum as complement and as it augmented the action of antibody now generally referred to as C or complement that means whatever the serum containing a certain type of protein which has a capacity of uh, lysis of these cells like bacteria all those things and that was augmented as uh, and it is going to augment the action of antibody and that's how the Paul Elefridge is going to refer that lytic agent as complement. That means he is the one who named this substance as complement or uh, represented as C. Now, according to the studies of Bordet and Ahelich, they said that the cytolytic action of complement depends on the presence of an anti-cell antibody. Okay, so that is number one. That they also said that complement was not a single substance but was comprised of several components that we already know that's why we call it as a complement system. Then components or uh, complements had to act in a specific order that means they are going to have some sort of a process in which they have to follow. Then coming to some uh, component activity appeared to be bound in some manner to the target cell. Whereas physical and chemical properties of the components are going to be different. That means some uh, components are having some properties and some may have the different. Then complement activity was going to be consumed, inactivated or fixed by antigen antibody complexes. Be there in solution or in an insoluble form. This last finding was used that is this last finding was used to invent the complement fixation test uh, that we have already discussed in the antigen antibody reactions okay a test what is the complement fixation test a test that is one of the most useful immunological test for antibodies or antigens even today okay so these are all the some of the characters or the features that uh, came given by this uh, more budget and ahelage while they are working on these things okay then moving to the components of complement system the complement system consists of over 30 soluble and cell bound proteins and glycoproteins that interact in highly regulated cascade that means a group following the initial activation and carry out a number of basic functions. The components are uh, mainly synthesized by liver hepatocytes and tissues uh, like macrophages that means by tissue macrophages, blood monocytes and even the epithelial cells of the genital urinary tract and gastrointestinal tract. So these are the regions where we can find the synthesis of these components called as complements. And this uh, complements are going to be of uh, nine functional components of complement which are going to be given the name as C12, C9 by letter uh, symbols. Example, we are also going to have some sort of a factor D, factor B, mannose binding uh, lecithin. So simply called as 
MBL, okay, minus binding lets lecithin, all these things. So here you can see these are all the different types of the complements which are going to be of from C1 to C9. Along with that, we are also having the factor B, factor D, and MBL, as I told you, minus binding lecithin, and even the MSCAP, okay, associated serine protease. And the subunits of these things, the C1 is going to have a C1Q and C1R2 and C2 is C1S2 and C2 is a monomer and the active form is this bar is going to indicate the active form of it okay and then C3 is alpha beta and C4 alpha beta gamma and C5 is a monomer which is C5 and here are the functions of each complement okay for example see the C1 the C1Q binds to the FC portion of antibody and uh, this uh, is going to participate in the phagocytosis, all those things. Then coming to the C1R2, serine protease, it activates the C1S by cleavage. And this also going to be of the same activates by cleavage of the C4 and C2. I told you this comp uh, components, that means complements are going to act in a specific order. So here is going to be of some sort of order showing. One is going to activate the other. Okay, so that we'll discuss while uh, discussing about the different pathways explaining this activation of complement system. So coming to the activation of complement system, the complement system needs to be activated before it takes effect. The activation can occur in one of the following three ways that is classical pathway, alternative pathway which is also called as a propadine pathway and the third one is lectin pathway. In all the pathways, that is either classical, alternative or lectin, homologous variants of C3 convertase are generated in the beginning of activation and finally we will have the MAC, that is membrane attack complex. So that means the initiation is with C3 convertase and the end product of these all pathways is going to be the membrane attack complex which is the product of complement cassette which causes osmotic lysis of the target cell. So let's see the first one classical pathway. So here this pathway is going to require antibodies for activation and it is in, uh, initiated by antigen antibody complexes and the initiation reaction so uh, c1 binds with the fc region of antibody and antigen antibody complex and this cleavage of c3 is by c3 convertase so the pathway is going to progress like this c1 is going to give rise to the c4 and this is going to give rise to the c2 and this give rise to c3 and final c5 which is giving rise to the final complex called as mac membrane attack complex okay so this is a brief let's see the picture then you'll get the clarity about the whole process of the classical pathway so the complement as i told you carries out important um, basic functions in both innate as well as in the acquired immunity in this classical pathway complement activation begins with what that is soluble antigen antibody complex that is called as immune complex now the formation of binding of antibody to an antigen present on your cell example uh, it may be a bacterial cell okay now the antibody that is involved in this one is the IgM and certain subclasses of IgG also activates this classical pathway. Now the antigen bound antibody makes a binding site available to the complement on it that is C1. So now the C1 is going to bind to the antibody FC portion which is a, in the formation of immune complex. Now this C1 what is happening? which has a, this C1 is going to have totally 22 subunits. So it is going to be in the form of a complex nature. So this you can see here, uh, we are going to have in the tabular form, 18 polypeptides. So totally we are going to have, including this, we are going to have the 22. Okay, so this 22 subunits. Now the binding of the C1Q subunits. So here you can come to here. The binding of the C1Q subunits to the FC region changes the conformation of C1R that results the activated C1R serine protein. Now this 
c1 so that means finally you are going to get a complex called as c1 qr2 s2 complex now larger the fragments of both c4 and c now what is happening this complex is activated so the activated form is going to have a bar here now this activated one is going to cleave the c4 and as well as the c2 one side it is cleaving the c4 and other side it is going to cleave the c2 now and this uh, c2 is giving rise to c2b and c2a and c4 is giving rise to c4a and c4b now the both the fragments one of the fragment of c4 and c2 combines to form a c4b2a complex which is going to be called as c3 convertase okay now this c3 convertase is going to cleave the fragments in, into the that is c3 fragment or complement so what we have discussed the activated c1 form is going to cleave the c4 complement and the c2 complement now the components of this c2 and c4 forms a uh, complex called as c4b2a which is also called as c3 convertase now this c3 convertase is going to cleave the c3 component or complement into c3a and c3b so up to here you have understood now as it is going to convert the c3 convertase is going to yield now this c3b is going to combine with the c3 convertase again and forming another complex called as c4b2a 3b that means complement 4b is there that came from here complement 2a is there that came from here and complement c3b is there and all together it is going to be called as c5 convertase that means this complex of c4b2a 3b is going to be called as c5 convertase now this is going to cleave the c5 so remember whichever the complement name uh, convertase we are going to give that is going to cleave that specific complement so here c5 convertase is going to cleave the uh, cleave the c5 whereas c3 convertase is going to cleave the c3 that's how okay now this c5 convertase is going to cleave the c5 into c5a and c5b now what is happening this c5b is going to combine and binds to the cell surface now once it is bound that is c5b is bound to the uh, cell phone now it is going to combine with of uh, having some sort of a complement 6 okay which will join with it and it forms a complex called as c5b6 now finally this fragment of c5b binds to the c6 and initiates the formation of a complex called as mac that is membrane attack complex and this classical pathway is a major effector of the humoral branch of immune response what happens once we get this mark we will discuss at last okay just uh, listen this classical pathway now once again the c1 qr2 s2 is getting activated and binds to the antigen antibody complex that is immune complex and it cleaves the c4 complement as well as the c2 complement now the components of c4 and c2 that is c2a and c4b combines together and forms a complex called as c3 convertase now this c3 convertase will cleave the c3 complement and giving rise to c3a and c3b now c3b again combines with the c3 convertase and giving rise to c5 convertase which further will cleave the complement called as c5 and gives rise to c5a and c5b now this c5b is going to bind to the self uh, surface combines with the c6 complement and forming a complex called as membrane attack complex so this is all about the classical pathway okay then moving to the second one this is alternative pathway so this pathway is a component of innate immunity okay so here it is a humoral immunity where antibody is involved and here it is a natural immunity that we are getting by birth and it is a major pathway of uh, complement activation 
The alternate pathway is initiated by various cell surface constraints that are foreign to the host, like a cell wall constraints of uh, gram negative and gram positive bacteria, like that. Now, the serum containing C3 undergoes constraints of uh, what we call as a breakage, that is a spontaneous hydrolysis. Okay, that means C3 is going to be cleaved by the hydrolysis mechanism and giving rise to C3A and C3B. Now, this C3B binds to the foreign antigens, that is of uh, bacterial cell walls or virus particles. Now, the C3B can now bind to the factor B. That is, we discuss other complements like factor B also, isn't it? Now, this bound factor B, okay, here it is, bound C3B is going to have the binding of factor B. Now, this factor B is cleavered by a factor D. Now, we had a complex called as C3B factor B. And now, this is going to be cleavered by the factor D, okay? And now, generating BA and BB. Now, the BB remains associated with the complement C3 to give rise to the enzymatic complex called as C3B BB, which acts as a C3 convertase. And we know what is the C3 convertase, which will cleave the C3. And from here, the C3B will enter into of cleaving the C5, and the C5B is going to bind to the cell surface and combines with the complement 6 and forms a membrane attack complex. So the rest of the thing is going to be the same and the final product is also going to be the same. Okay. So this is all about the alternative pathway where the C3 is the initial component of this one. Okay. Then moving to the third type of the pathway that is a lectin pathway which is also called as mannose binding pathway or mannose binding lectin pathway or simply called as MBL pathway. So here, the lectins are the proteins that bind to a carbohydrate residue of a glycoprotein or a polysaccharide. This pathway is initiated when MBL, that is mannose binding lectin, which is produced. So when it is going to be produced means it is produced in inflammatory response and binds to the mannose residue on the glycoprotein or a carbohydrate. Now, the MSAP, that is what we call it as mannose associated serine protease, okay, binds to the MBL and forms a complex called as MBL MSP complex, which is going to cleave the C4. Now, this C4 is going to give rise to the C4A and C4B and this C4B combines with the C2A and forms a C3 convertase and this C3 convertase is going to break the C3 and this C3 breakage of C3B combines with the uh, C5B component and giving rise to the MAC which is the final product of this lectin pathway also. So, that's how the Though the initial component is different, but the final product of these all the uh, three pathways leading to the same product that is MAC component. Okay. Now, what is happening once this MAC is going to form? That is membrane attack complex. Now, as I told you that this all the three pathways are generating the C5B, which binds to the surface of the target cell and is extremely liable. That means it is inactivated within two minutes and it is stabilized by the binding of C6. So that we had seen here, it is stabilized by the C6 molecule. Okay. And now it uh, joins with the C7 and C5B6 complex. And we are going to have the C5B6, 7, 8. And now it is going to combine with the 8 and 9. And finally, we are going to have the C5B6789, which we call it as a membrane attack complex. And this is going to have a pore size of about 7200 uh, angstrom through which ions and small molecules diffuses freely. So what happens if the ions and uh, molecules are diffusing freely? So that leaves the cell has no longer maintaining its uh, osmotic stability and is lysed by an influx of extracellular fluid and loss of 
electrolyte. So that's how a pathogen is going to be lysed by activating the complements either by the classical pathway or by the alternative pathway or by the lectin pathway. So whatever the pathway, your final product is going to be the MAC. But the initial components are going to be differed with one another. So that's what I told you in the alternate pathway, immune complex is the one sorry classical pathway immune complex is the one initiator of this c1 and in the alternative pathway we are going to have the innate immunity and the c3 is the hydrolysis of the initiating one and then the lectin pathway mbl is going to be the initiating component in the process of uh, complement pathway okay so that's all about the comp uh, activation of complement system or complement then moving to the functions of complement system so we are having a several uh, functions of these complements directly or indirectly so here we, we are going to discuss in detail so let's have a glance so we are having the opsonization and phagocytosis then cell lysis then chemotaxis then activation of mast cells and basophils and enhancement of uh, inflammation then production of antibodies then immune clearance so these are the six major types of the functions of a complement or complement system so let's see the first one opsonization and phagocytosis so here you can see the picture the c3b bound to the immune complex or coated to the surface of uh, antigens or the surface of the pathogen and activates the phagocytic cells now these proteins bind to specific receptors on the phagocytic cells and get engulfed so that's how the opsonization is the process of coating and the phagocytosis is going to be engulfing so the complement is going to act in such a manner then coming to the cell lysis the membrane attack complex formed by the c5 b6 7 8 9 we simply call as a mac components ruptures the microbial cell surface which kills the cell then moving to the third one is of uh, what we call as chemotaxis so here you can see the chemotaxis the complement fragments attract the neutrophils and the macrophages to the area where the antigen is present now these cell surface have receptors for complements like uh, c5a c3a and thus run towards the site of inflammation by the process called as chemotaxis. Now coming to the fourth type of function that is activation of uh, mast cells and basophils and enhancement of inflammation. So here the proteolytic complement fragments such as uh, C5A, then C4A uh, and C3A all are going to be of induced acute inflammation by activating the mast cells and neutrophils and then all the three peptide binds to the mast cell and induce degranulation so what it is going to happen here is a degranulation is occurring while the release of bind to the mast cells and induce degranulation the release of a substance called as vasoactive mediators such as histamine is also going to be released and this histamine is going to uh, trigger some sort of uh, hypersensitivity reactions so these peptides are also called as anaphylotoxins that means histamines are going to act as a anaphylotoxins because the mast cells reactions trigger a process called as anaphylaxis Binding to the specific complement receptors on cells of the immune system, they trigger specific cell functions like inflammation and secretion of immunoregulatory molecules. Then coming to the production of antibodies, so here you can see lots of antibodies are produced. B cells have a receptor for C3B and uh, when this C3B is going to bind to the B cell, it secretes more antibodies. Thus, C3B is also an antibody producing amplifiers which converts it into effective defense mechanism to destroy the invading microorganisms. And then coming to the immunoclearance. The complement system uh, removes immune complexes from the circulation and they are also going to... Uh, 
So here you can see uh, where you are going to have the deposits them in the spleen and liver. Thus, it acts as anti-inflammatory function. Now, the complement proteins promote the solubilization of these complexes and their clearance of phagocytes is going to occur. So, these are the few functions of a complement system or complements. Okay. So, that is all about the complement system functions, pathways and the characters of complement system. Thank you.